key thing about um, the product is, is, is particular product is it lets you analyze and interrogate because what, what we have it's just a pedigrees it's a database of pedigrees and that's all it is it's, it's got we've got 20 years worth of data um, um, from from all the major regions of the world and you can interrogate you can ask questions so for example here this is a five generation pedigree and we could say well, I'll put broad brush in there and so what I want is I want to um, and what I've got is I've got uh, these are all the group winners or the stakes winners by Broadbrush. And at the bottom here, there's a summary. It says there's 47 uh, stakes winners by Broadbrush. There's seven group ones, five group twos. And this is the pedigree of the one up the top. <coughs> so this, we're looking at the pedigree of concern. The next one, if I go down to FADA Amiga, we're looking at the pedigree of FADA Amiga. We're looking at the pedigree of include. So, for example, if you're interested in broad brush, by going down the pedigree list, you can tell what's common. So you can look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's um, concerns pedigree. This is Father Omega's pedigree. This is includes pedigree. And so on. Now, if you then go back, and, and you can, okay, the other, one of the things that the product does is it does a summary matrix. So if we click on here, the summary matrix, and this is pretty neat, because this gives us a summary, a breakdown, like a CAT scan, if you, if you will, of those particular uh, stakes winners. So there's 47 in total. Of the 47, 7 won a group 1, 5 won a group 2, um, 21 were male, 26 were female, 3 of the 47 won a group race as a 2 year old, 23 as a 3 year old, 29 as an open horse. Now, what this is saying is that really broad brush does not produce 2 year olds. Only 3 out of the 47, less than 10%, were 2 year olds. But, but they then train on, they become 3 year olds, they become 4 year olds. Um, 11 out of the 47 uh, won over a sprint journey, 35 out of middle distance, middle distance being f 7 furlongs to, um, or rather 8 furlongs to, to 10 furlongs, and 7 over, uh, over a staying trip, which is 2,000, which is 10 furlongs or, or beyond. So this is saying that Broadbrush predominantly is producing um, um, uh, three-year-olds that train on, that run over a sprint and a middle distance, which really is what, what we're after. Well, it's what, what I'm after. I mean, it depends on what this profile, of course, you know, depends on what what, what, um, what attributes or what, what kind of horse you're trying to breed. Some, certainly in Australia, a lot of people try to breed two-year-olds. Me, I mean, I'm a breeder. I have one man. I breed, I breed horses. Um, I don't breed for the two-year-old races. I breed for three-year-olds and the classics and beyond. So it depends on what you're after. Two-year-olds, classics. So. But the summary matrix, let, you know, let you see that. What we can then do is we can say, well, okay... <clears throat> This box here is called H2, which is half two, because what we can do is we can look at Broadbrush as a, st as a stallion over Rebo in H2. H2 is half number two. So then we do a search, and what it's telling me is that um, um, this, is, this is how many stakes winners have Broadbrush with Rebo in the dam. And, and there's, there's 10 stakes winners. Again, down the bottom it says 10 stakes winners, four, four grade ones, um, no grade twos, and three grade threes. And again here, if you do a summary matrix, <clears throat> it gives us a summary of that particular cross. So if you put, if you've got broad brush on the top and you've got, you've got, um, um, you've got rebo on the bottom, uh, what's interesting is that it's 10 stakes winners, no, no two-year-olds, four three-year-olds, and seven open horses. Again, they, they, they trained on. One over a sprint, predominantly middle distance, and three out of the 10, 30%, one over a staying trip. So this is a good pattern. This is a good pattern for if you want to breed a classic horse, um, you know, for, for derbies and things. Okay. okay. The, the power of the power of this tool is, is is you can you can interrogate and you can ask questions of any ancestor in any position. So apart from the, the traditional sire and broodmare sire, we can ask questions like, and I'll show you for example. I once had a mare, and, and my mare was by a stadium called Danza Torre. And you can put Danza Torre in H2, and it tells us all the stakes winners that have Danza Torre on the dam side. And you can run down the list, there's 30 of them, but more importantly, if I run down this list and look at this top side, um, this is by in Costa de Lago. Um, uh, this stadium had Mr. Prospector, here is Mr. Prospector. Here is Snippets, here is Mr. Prospector, 
here is Mr. Prospector. So you go run, you run through them all, and it became clear to me that my, my Densitore mare likes Mr. Prospector. What I then did was I said, okay, my second dam sire is a stallion called Shecky Green. So I put Shecky Green in here, which is the second dam sire position, and I do a search. And again, it tells me all the stakes winners from around the world that have Shecky Green in that spot. And if you look at them, again, you go down to the list, and I've got Q of the Blues, Stop the Music, here, Mr. Prospector, um, uh, Danzig, uh, Nureyev, uh, Sharpen Up, um, Mr. Prospector again. So again, my second dam sire seemed to like Mr. Prospector. So if your first dam sire likes Mr. Prospector and your second dam sire likes Mr. Prospector, there's a good chance that your mare likes Mr. Prospector. You with me? So it, it, it makes sense, and, but you, you can get even fancier. For example, my, um, I had another mare, uh, actually I don't have any mares at the moment, they both died unfortunately, but, and um, my fourth, my other mare is, was an, is an American bred mare, and her fourth dam is a mare called Tournoir. So you can put Tournoir in quartile four, and it'll tell you all the group winners that have Tournoir. In other words, this is my fourth dam. So this is telling me, this is a list of all the group winners that have my mare as their fourth dam. In other words, it's, tell, it's telling me what my family, what my female line likes. Rather than just look at this spot here or this spot here, this is saying, okay, Tournoir has produced so many horses, and by running up and down the list, I can find out what, you know, what, what, her, what her affinities are. Uh, now, Chaluki, the other thing you can do here is you can double click on the name and it gives you a breakdown of what Chaluki won, for example. So, Chaluki won two grade ones as a two year old in 1999, um, two grade threes, and then three, um, um, three grade twos as an open horse, and so on. So, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. You, it, gives you a, it gives you a summary. Um, Again, I mean, this information is available in other places. You can go to websites, you can go to books, but to have it at your fingertips is really, you know, it's very, very handy. Okay. Um, let's talk about some things that are, that are working. I want to talk about some positive crosses that are working in, the, in, 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 certain in this country. Uh, I'll talk about Giants Causeway. Um, and Giants Causeway for example likes Damascus so we'll do Giants Causeway over Damascus and now what we're saying is we're after Giants oh, it, it was the wrong Damascus I fall for that all the time that one had gone west So now what I've done, I put, I put Giants Causeway in H1 and Damascus in H2. So now I'm looking Giants Causeway up the top. In other words, I'm looking for Giants Causeway as a sire, Giants Causeway as a, as a second sire, as, or as, a, as, a, as a sire of sires, or the grand sire. So, and this is saying that you know, um, Giants Causeway over Damascus has produced, I'm getting a bit old, so I can't see properly, but it's produced eight, eight, eight stakes winners. Now, the question is, is that good? Um, I mean, it's produced, one, it's produced a group one, it's produced three group two, so that's, that's a good sign. But is that a good result? Um, now, we don't actually, we don't have the entire population of, 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 of the stud books um, um, loaded into a database. But what I did was I worked with a guy in Boston, um, a guy called Michael Ventura. Um, and we developed this thing called the uh, Ventura GeoScore. And now what's funny, what's unusual about today is that I've been all over the world, I give presentations, I talk about Michael Ventura and VGS and what have you, but, but today Michael's actually here. <laughs> so, so, so this is this, this a new one, so I've got to be careful what I say because he'll, he'll, uh, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll pick me up on a few things, but that, so that's very unusual. But yeah, so Michael uh, helped me because Michael very has a math, math, mathematical bent. And what we're saying here, it's pretty neat because what it's saying is, look, Giants Causeway has 57 stakes winners. On the sire side, Damascus has 1,020 stakes winners on the dam side. So if, if you apply some simple mathematics, then you can say, right, how many should have Giants Causeway and Damascus in every country of the world? So in, in the USA, stakes winners predicted, it should have been 2.6. Now in the USA, it's actually produced six stakes winners. So if you predicted 2.6 and it's actually produced six, you divide six by 2.6 and you get 2.36. So what that's saying is that this cross is overachieving 2.3 times the expected average. 
Okay, so it's producing group when it's two, 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 almost 2.3 times faster than expected, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, same with Australia now, we don't have much, there's not much giant scores in other parts of the world. And then worldwide, it should have produced 3.1, it's actually produced 8, it's VGS 2.5, so that cross, giant scores in Damascus, is producing group when it's 2.5 times faster than expected, faster than the average, which is a good result. So if your mayor has Damascus, sending it to a Giants Causeway stallion, a Giants Causeway line, is, 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 a, is, a, is a high percentage play. Now, um, in particular, I did want to show you just quickly, one of uh, Damascus's best sons, is private account. Uh, there's three stakes winners. And I won't do this, I won't do the VGS every single time because um, it does take a little while. You can see here in the USA it's predicting it should have had 6.6 .6 of a stakes winner, it's actually had two. So its score, its regional score is 4.4. .4. In Ireland, it should have had no stakes winners. It's actually had one. Its regional score is 22.7. So on a worldwide basis, Giants Causeway and Private Account together, it should have had half a stakes winner. It's actually had three. And its VGS is 5.8, which is very high. Clearly, when you have, when you're predicting 0.5 and you actually get an answer of one, a score of one, you know, could be here or there. A score of two, um, it can't be a fluke. A score of three, has to be has, has to be statistically valid. And if we wanted to, we could we could show you some some mathematics around this. You could do a sigma three analysis. We could set up some boundary ranges and um, and confidence intervals and, and what have you. But I think statistically, you could probably um, I could probably demonstrate to you that this is valid to, to an accuracy of ninety seven point five percent or something like that. Yeah. But that's a good it's it's a, it's, a, it's a high percentage play. So if you have any mares, and of course I'm talking about Giants Causeway. There's lots of Giants Causeway everywhere. Um, um, in America, I mean, certainly here at Empire Stud, there's this Frost Giant, who's one of the young stallions. So, if you had, if one of your mares had private account um, in her, it doesn't matter where she is; it doesn't have to be directly. Because if you look at, if you look at what I've done here, private account. See where private account is here? It's a second dam sire. If in Tricky Causeway, private account is directly, and in Dream the Impossible, private account is down here. So we're saying, and, and, and this is important because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, but it's too far away. The problem is we don't know what this horse, Spain, I mean, she was a good horse, but um, we don't know what, what genes she inherited. She, we don't know if she's got Thunder Gulch genes. We don't know if she's got Regal and Royal genes. We don't know if she's got private account genes. So because we don't know, then, I mean, um, uh, you, you, you take whatever, whatever you can, and in this case, private account, and you say, well, okay, it, it's, uh, it, it's a good chance. It's better than, better than not knowing. Now, if you do that, so if, um, um, no, excuse me. The other big affinity for Giants Causeway is, is in reality. Uh, again, it's produced seven, seven stakes winners. And if I do a VGS, again, it comes up high. So what happens is you build up, you start building up some knowledge as to what working with Giants Causeway, sort of doing this. So we know Giants Causeway work, works with Damascus, private account. I'll show you that Giants Causeway works within reality, anywhere in your pedigree. So if you have a mare, and ideally if your mare's got private account and in reality in her, then she'd be fantastic for Giants Causeway because then you've got, you've got both angles covered. And that, that, that's what you do, you look for, you look for combinations. Um, conversely, for example, I mean Empire Stud themselves, <coughs> you've got, I've got Erin sitting in the back there. If she wanted to go this, to, I mean there's a, uh, there's a there's, there's brood mare sales all the time um, in different places. If she wanted to, as she's going through the catalogue, she'll find a mare and it's, the mare's got private account. And in reality, and she'll say, yeah, I've got to buy this man and send it to Frost Giant. That's how, if you, if you own stallions or stallion shares, that's how, you, that's how you work it out. So, well, okay, what mare do I send? You either have 10 mares and a stallion share, you want to work out which mare to send? But if you never plugged in reality in, you would have never 
seen that. Is there some way that it tells you who to plug in? <laughs> it's <laughs> no. Well, no. You, you can use the affinity matrix to try to find a cross with a particular cyan. You, you can, you can, and I'll. Um, it's, it's a good point, and I will. Um, so maybe, sorry, I shouldn't say no. Um, uh, I will demonstrate what the affinity matrix does, and maybe it'll give you give you it gives you part of the answer. Part of the answer. But the, but can I just say the, the game? You, this game is very hard. The breeding game is very hard. Uh, um, two, two months ago, just just a quick story. Two months ago in Australia, there was a big write up about a horse. Uh, Reduced Choice is the number one stallion in Australia. He, he's sort of a, he, he's the king. He's the most expensive and he's the most dominant. And a horse won, a, a three-year-old won, um, by Reduced Choice. And there was a big write-up in the paper because he won. He won in a very small country town. What was significant about this horse at one was he won, he, he was raced by the breeder because he couldn't sell him at, he couldn't sell him at the yearly sales. He, the, the horse sold for $1.2 million, um, which is about $1.1 million US, for example. But what happened was he failed his scope. So the breeder had to take him back. So the breeder took him back. And the breeder gave this horse, a $1.1 million horse, to his son to train because <laughs> his son's a bit of a trainer. So he gave it to the... Anyway, the, the story was, though, that why this horse was special was because last year in Australia, there were six reduced choice yearlings that sold for over $1 million. Right? The only one to have won a race was this one that failed the vet, the vet examination. Wouldn't you, would you, would you wouldn't believe it. The other five, um, uh, and I'm, I'm just telling the story, to just, and there's probably similar stories here, but it, it just struck me at that point just how hard it is. You know, imagine, the only one that's won a race is the one that failed the scope. It's, 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 it's crazy. Uh, but yes, I'll show you. Um, like, say a full brother to Giant Causeway, would that or not necessarily come up with similar results? Leland, the... Um, We don't know if a stallion's got fast genes, and, and the only way we know if he's got the fast genes is, is when he races. And if he races and he can run fast, then, then we say, okay, he's got the fast genes. If, if they don't race, if it's a full brother to an unraced um, hero, it's like, um, you know, Kitalfa, who's a full brother to, right. to King Mambo. King Mambo. Yeah, um, he didn't race. Now, we don't know whether Kitalfa, of course, um, often they, they, they hurt themselves and they're retired. Sometimes they're too slow and they're embarrassed. Um, but we don't know. And sometimes, certainly, some stadiums can, you know, they say Pavarotti's brother couldn't sing. Um, um, but, right. but some stadiums, if you don't know, if, he's, if, he, if you don't know if a, if a, if a stadium has fast genes, let's say, then it's, there's not much, if he's got slow genes, if it's, it's, he's not going to pass on fast genes to his sons or to, or to, to his progeny. So you need to know. So to answer your question, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But having said, but there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's certainly a lot of, you know, I mean, His, His Majesty and Graustark were both good horses. Um, funnily enough, I was talking about Moccasin and Thong. I think Moccasin was a champion two-year-old filly. Thong was slow, whereas Thong is a much better breeder. So with genetics, I mean, I don't, I don't really have any answers. It's, it's a complicated, it's a kaleidoscope. You know, this genetics, you look at this thing, there's 32 ancestors here, and it's a kaleidoscope. We don't know how, we don't know, the, the inheritance path is, is very complicated. Um, I mean, ultimately, um, I mean, you know, after the fourth crop, you, you tend to know, but that stage is a bit hard. Trying to predict is very difficult. Yeah. So, Giants Causeway, in reality, has a VGS of 2.5, which means it's, it's overachieving two and a half times. So, if you have, um, uh, if you have a mare that's got in reality and private account, or a mare within reality and, and, and Damascus, it's a high percentage play to send her to, send her to a Giants Causeway stallion. Now, you can, you can get fancy with this, and I'm not going to talk about this for, for too long, but you can get fancy with this quartile analysis. For, so, for example, you can put in Q3, let's say you want to f identify broodmare size that have both Damascus and in, in reality in them. So you can do this, and you can do a search, and this is going to bring up all the, all the good horses that have Damascus <coughs> and in reality in the bottom quartile, and what happens is, um, I actually, I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've done it. In reality, with uh, about the best mix with Damascus, right?
So then if we, um, okay, and then one thing we can do is we can turn countries on and off. So if I come to here and I want to look at only American, American horses. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find potential broodmare sires that have both Damascus and in reality in them to send to a Giants Causeway Stallion. And you can do it, I'm just demonstrating that you can do it with the product here. Um, and if I can get to um, no, I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, I did actually do a bit of research, and there was there was actually there's 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 a brood messiah, or there's an answer called Cutlass Reality, who actually has both. Cutlass Reality has has uh, Damascus and in reality in there. And I, I've lost my train of thought as to how I actually uh, uh, found that, and I'm not going to, um, I'll come back to it later. But nonetheless, Cutlass Reality has both. So if by chance you have a mare that's by Cutlass Reality, and I don't know how common, how prevalent this, this brood missile is, if you did, sending her to a Giants Causeway Stadium is a high percentage play. And that's what we're all about. Um, certainly Giants cause I miss a prospect there and I won't do the VGS I won't do the, the full thing but um, Giants cause I miss a prospect uh, is also a very very strong affinity the I think the VGS comes out at 3.8, almost 4. So sending a, a mare with this a prospect of Giants Causeway gives you, uh, um, uh, gives you a, a chance of producing a group winner four times higher than, than, than statistically expected. Um, now, there's two actual strains. I, didn't, uh, I won't show you how I got them, but there's two particular strains of Mr. Prospect that work fantastic with Giants Causeway in particular. They're Seeking the Gold. Um, seeking the Gold, and again, again, in terms of the VGS, it comes out at 24. So if you've got a Seeking the Gold mare, or seeking, if you've got Seeking the Gold anywhere in your mare, sending her to a Giants Causeway Stallion um, is overachieving 24 times the average, which is a very high number. And the other good strain of Mr. Prospector is Crafty Prospector, who, with a VGS of 18. So sending her, if you've got a mare with Crafty, Crafty Prospector, sending her to Giants Causeway <coughs> overachieves 18 times uh, the, the average, which is a great result. Very high, very high percentage. Uh, now Frost Giant... Uh, obviously, Frost Giant stands here at Empire Stud, and here's, here's a Giant's Causeway. Um, so sending F Frost Giant mares with Mr. Prospector is a high percentage play. Now somebody's going to say, hey, Leo, but the Frost Giant also has Mr. Prospector, so if I send a Mr. Prospector mare to Frost Giant, I'm going to get inbreed into Mr. Prospector. And is that good or bad? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to address that, whether it's good or bad. Um, uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do it now. I'll do it now. I'm done. If we put Mr. Prospect in H1, and if we put Mr. Prospect in H2, and you can see by how long it takes for the blue line to go up, it, it, there's a lot of them. And down the bottom here, there's 278 stakes winners, bred, inbred to Mr. Prospector, 34 grade ones, 31 grade twos, and so on and so forth. And if I click on a summary matrix, I just find something very interesting. Um, I like doing this because a lot of people Ask me about inbreeding. A lot of people shy away from inbreeding Mr. Prospector because Mr. Prospector was fragile. He had weak knees or he had, you know, um, you know, they didn't train on and so on and so forth. We've heard all the stories. But in reality, if you look at the data, inbreeding Mr. Prospector <coughs> has... Um, I apologize, I only had America turned on. So let me turn them all on. Because there's a lot more. <laughs> there's a lot more than that. Okay, do a summary matrix. And let's have a look. So this is inbreeding Mr. Prospect. Mr. Prospect in the top half. Anywhere, Mr. Prospect in the bottom half, anywhere. There's 16 different countries that have produced that, and 
Uh, so inbreed the cotton bits of prospect that has produced stakes winners in 16 different countries. There's a total of 412 stakes winners. Um, male and female, there's 229 males, 183 females. There's 155 out of the 400, it's like 40%, won a group race as a two-year-old. 169 won a group race as a three-year-old. 172 won a group race as an open horse. The key thing here is that 172 is more than 155. So in other words, more horses won as a three-year-old and open horses than as two-year-olds. So they trained on, they didn't just break down. And then distance, 244, over 50%, say 60% won over a sprint journey. Sprint being five, six furlongs. Sorry, five, six, seven furlongs. Um, 205 won over um, a middle distance. And, and, and 34 over a, uh, a staying trip, which is less than 10%. But as you would expect, so again, this is not too bad. Over half, one over middle distance, middle distance being eight furlongs, nine furlongs.